Joining me now is John Elliott, former National Security Council spokesman and former deputy assistant to President Trump. Thank you, as always. The U.S. sending these precision bombs, what is the significance of this move? Well, the significance, Marnie, you were fantastic to point out that a lot of people overlook the fact that these were requested by Israel from the United States. This particular tranche of 320 million was was requested before the unspeakable attacks that happened on October 7th. So this would have been provided to them anyway. Uh, it might be a little bit of an accelerated time frame, but these were requests by Israel. So that was good of you to point that out. What these do, actually, these are standoff munitions that are actually made by an Israeli company, believe it or not, but they were sold to the U.S., and U.S. is transferring them back per the Israelis' request. What these do is they provide up to 100 kilometers of precision-guided, non-GPS-guided munitions. They're very sophisticated, but actually what they do is they allow for more precise targeting. So with the argument that the Israelis need to be very precise in terms of attacking the tunnel entrances and others for Hamas, these have enable that to do that almost better than any other system that we would actually give to Israel or give to uh, other uh, international actors, non-domestic. Understood. Uh, there is discussion now of tactical pauses. What are some of the benefits and risks in that, some lasting between 60 and 90 minutes? Well, Prime Minister Netanyahu, in his address uh, just uh, a day ago, he said that they've already been doing these pauses, if you will. Well, he called them just very small pauses that would allow for people to evacuate a certain area when they're about to hit that, for example. And so those are those have been going on. Those are you don't need to call for that because those are actually pauses in the bombing actual runs that would be done by the Israelis, and they'll take a pause sometimes for several hours, sometimes for half a day, et cetera, that would be pretty pretty uh, long for the pauses. But these are separate from what's called either a humanitarian pause or a ceasefire entirely, which would last for days, if not longer. And what those are, Prime Minister Netanyahu has ruled those out completely because those would just allow Hamas to, to re-equip and to take a rest and a respite, and they would know what the time frame is for them to resupply. And so to have these tactical pauses, to have, to have something that's a very small interim pause for a few hours, et cetera, that does not disrupt the overall campaign. And so that is something that the Israelis are already doing. And at the same time, the UAE has set up a field hospital or is looking to set up a field hospital in Gaza. Does that signify something more than a humanitarian move in this ongoing conflict? And how is that being viewed by the U.S. and its allies? Well, look, the UAE, we like to see the Arab community come up and have ownership of what's going on in Gaza in terms of taking on some of the, especially the humanitarian burden. We don't want them to get involved otherwise by way of funding or anything right now. But in terms of taking the responsibility, really, that's also about who's going to be running Gaza after this. And we're looking to possibly have the uh, have the UAE and others doing that. But very quickly, to your point about the field hospital, that's something that is always welcome. They should be very careful to say that they're never going to let Hamas in bed there with those hospitals because that's what's been really bad up in Gaza City and other places where Hamas actually uses hospitals as a shield. And so for the UAE to come in there, don't let Hamas go along with them and, and in bed with them in any way close to those hospitals. And the second thing is to make sure that when they bring humanitarian or medical aid in, they should make sure that all of that is vetted so that there's nothing else that Hamas can be used or can use for its own purposes separate from the hospital. Understood. Uh, Israel is also purchasing weapons from the U.S., assuring the White House that they'll only be used by police and not by violent settlers in the West Bank or in Gaza. Is there any real way to assure that happens? Well, sure. I mean, it's something that the Israelis would be using that only for their own purposes, and, and they abide by the laws of war, unlike Hamas and unlike Islamic Jihad and others that are that are they're they're targeting at this point in retaliation for these unspeakable attacks on October 7th. So it's something where where they can trust the Israelis because the Israelis have a track record of following 
the laws of war, and they're also a democracy, which shows that they are accountable to a free press that would expose and it would really hurt their relationship if they were to use them for any other purpose with the U.S. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.